The early pioneers in the study of human origins were global explorers and adventurers. Among these pioneering anthropologists, there was one fearless and intrepid American woman. Osa Johnson was a farm girl from the Midwest. She was born in Chanute, Kansas in 1884. Her family and friends said she was a bit of a tomboy, rough around the edges. Chanute, located near the Oklahoma border, was a bustling railroad junction known for its grain elevators, wheat fields, and corn production. Osa Leite married Martin Johnson, a Kansas jeweler, in 1910. Johnson had wooed Osa with tales of worldwide travels. He had once been a stowaway on a cargo ship and eventually became the ship's cook. Martin Johnson became a photographer and taught himself the art of trick photography. According to safarimuseum.com, the Johnson's equipment was the most advanced motion picture apparatus of their time. Safarimuseum.com From 1917 to 1936, Martin and Osa Johnson set up camp in some of the most remote areas of the world and provided an unmatched photographic record of the wilderness of Kenya, the Congo. By the 1930s, Osa Johnson had also gained notoriety in her own right as a renowned documentary director and producer of African safari adventure films. According to the Women's Film Project, she was deemed, quote, the greatest woman explorer and big game hunter, end quote, by Collier's Magazine. SafariMuseum.com, over the course of 27 years, Osa and Martin collaborated on 14 feature films, 37 educational short films, seven books, and countless lectures on their expeditions to the South Pacific and Africa. Osa Johnson was best known for her works of fiction. Her films such as Congorilla and Simba were smashing successes at the box office. Her films became so popular that she was once invited to tea with Queen Elizabeth and the Duke and Duchess of York. Babuna premiered at the Rialto in New York City in 1935. It became their highest grossing film. According to Turner Classic Movies, the film featured Secrets of the Dark Continent, capturing glimpses of the continent natives, wildlife, and geography on film, including a visit to a pygmy camp. Exploring Africa for the Missing Link. In the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, explorers from America Great Britain and other Western nations were exploring Central Africa for the elusive ape men, missing links. Many of the top anthropologists were convinced that the missing link could be found in Africa. South Africa anatomist Professor Raymond Dart had discovered the Tong child, Australopithecus africanus, from a quarry near Johannesburg in 1925. Dart's discovery sparked a rush of archaeologists venturing to Africa to be the first to find the missing link. Many scientists, such as Philip Tobias, a protege of Raymond Dart, believed the ape man could be found in South Africa, and that by studying living African tribesmen, the mystery could be solved. Others favored East Africa routes, Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. 
Louis Leakey was eager to be the first to discover a proto-human. Together with his wife Mary, he meticulously searched the sediments at Old Vi Gorge, Tanzania, for hominid bones and stone tools. The Mysterious Ape Man of the Congo French and Belgian explorers scoured the Congo in search of the elusive missing links. Bernard Hovelmans was a well-respected French anthropologist and author. He led numerous expeditions into the Congo in search of the mysterious ape man. Hovelmans consulted with Leakey in Nairobi prior to many of these expeditions. Hovelmans contended that the African pygmies likely were a quote unquote relic species and could even be a late surviving Australopithecine. From the early days of anthropology, Afro pygmies were not considered to be fully modern humans. Many considered them to be the missing link. The morphology seemed to match. Prognathism in the maxilla region of the pygmies seemed to be nearly identical to facial traits of the Australopithecines. Another French anthropologist, Jacqueline Rumquier, chronicled multiple sightings in the Congo of what she called the X species. She believed the ape man of the forest were from an archaic lineage going back 500,000 years. From cryptidarchives.com, Hovelmans theorized that these cryptids could be explained by surviving species of Australopithecus. Ivan Sanderson also led expeditions into the African interior. He largely agreed, but believed more strongly that the pygmies were late surviving archaic Homo sapiens. Osa Johnson in the Congo. Martin and Osa Johnson produced several short films that focused on the lives of the African pygmies in the Ituri forest of the Congo. The African Pygmies were also the focus of many of their feature films, including Congorilla, Wonders of the Congo, Jungle's Calling, and African Paradise. Later in her career, Johnson faced several controversies. She was criticized for depicting the Pygmies as ape men. The narrator in one of Osa Johnson's films referred to the quote-unquote monkey people who climb coconut trees. He continued, quote, nature has given them the ability with a simple twist of the toes, much like an ape, end quote. In Across the World, the narrator states, quote, notice this fellow, he looks like a cross between an ape and a man, end quote. According to Turner Classic Movies, Johnson watched with amusement as the pygmies struggled with cigar smoke and orchestrated their dance performances for visiting white audiences on the movie set. From Women's Film Project, the Johnson's films exploited racist conventions of early ethnographic filmmaking, exaggerated in their sensationalist stunts as when in Congorilla 1932, they gave cigars to African pygmy tribesmen. Travelfilm.com, Osa Johnson's big game hunt, including lions, rhino, elephants, baboons, a prime example of the type of popular, wildly exploitative travel film made in the U.S. between 1920 and 1950. Despite the historical revisionism, Osa Johnson's contributions are still felt today. Indeed, Disney World architects in the 1950s modeled the Animal Kingdom Lodge after Osa Johnson's last few books and films published in the 1950s. Chanute Tribune, March 2024, the largest ongoing exhibit of Johnson's photos outside of Chanute's museum 
is at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. The architects developed a new safari lodge borrowed from the museum for research and inspiration. Osa Johnson's films are still popular, particularly among classic movie enthusiasts on numerous platforms. Simba, for example, has 20,000 views on YouTube. Fashion Icon Osa Johnson's Safari Adventures even inspired an entire clothing line in 26 stores across the United States, American Eagle Outfitters. The New York Times described her as a design and lifestyle inspiration to countless American women. But there was another side to Osa Johnson. She would be viewed as a quote unquote trad wife by today's standards, a good homemaker, cooking meals for her husband, and even using cosmetics while out on safari. Osa Johnson's Legacy in Anthropology New genetic data has emerged in the last two decades that indicates Central Africans, including Twa, Mbuti, and Baka, may have significant archaic hominid lineage. And the fossil evidence from the 1970s onward seems to confirm the new genetics data for archaic African admixture. Paleoanthropologists of the early to mid 20th century helped to establish firm evidence of modern Africans' links to archaic hominid species. But it was Osa Johnson who truly popularized the ape men of Africa through film and literature. Despite the critics, Osa Johnson's portrayal of Central Africans as ape men may, after all these years, prove to be prescient. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and pass this video on to others. We'll see you soon.